while I wanted to do a more fun and lighthearted video, it didn't work out that way. This has a bit of sadness to it, but it's also an incredible honor to be able to do this, to help this family pay tribute. This is what I did, and I'm going to bring you along to show you how everything turned out. I figure 16 inches inside at the top, 24 inches wide at the shoulder, and 12 inches wide at the bottom on the inside, and then 80 inches for the overall length from top to bottom, and that should be plenty. The uh, vault that it's going to go in is 30 and a half inches wide. Um, inside 86 inches long and 24 inches deep so there should be plenty of room in there for that and it's going to be i'm going to make it 16 inches deep and 80 inches long overall and this is going to be the side pieces and it's going to have the uh, tapers that's going to make the shape of the case now you can kind of see here that this tapers out down to the end and it tapers up towards the top from here to here is 11 inches. Outside here to here is 11 inches. Let's see, I gotta cut this other taper up here on the top and that will give me the shape. All right, I got the top set up, and I'm kind of worried about that hanging over so much. I'm, I'm going to cut it slow. So here I came up with the idea of putting the scrap up under the overhanging edge, and it made it a lot more stable and safe to make this cut. So this is the overall shape that I was going for. Also demonstrating here that if you scribe and mark this angle, it makes the cut easily repeatable. Here's Anna helping out with the heavy lifting since I'm disabled right now. Well, I'm recovering from surgery. I'm not supposed to lift more than 10 pounds, so she's doing the heavy lifting. They're doing a wonderful job, I might add. Happy to help. I'm taking these two by sixes and I rip them straight. And I'm going to rip them into inch and a quarter square pieces. And I'm going to use that as an edging around the bottom and then ribs like joists, floor joists in that. Got an inch and a quarter square piece and that's going to be the other uh, edging around the bottom and the ribs to go in to screw the boards down into. Using a inch and a half GRK cabinet screws. I got it in place and it's sticking out just a fuzz. So I'm gonna take it back to the miter saw and shave just a little bit off of it. Yeah, this end fits perfect. Once I get these together, I can put the ribs going across horizontally, the one at the bottom, one at the top, and a couple through the middle. And then I can screw all that together and make a good, strong, sturdy base. But what I'm gonna do now is my vertical pieces I'd like to notch them down into this so that the actual vertical piece is going to stick up is holding in to the bottom part of the framing instead of the boards that are making the side of the cabinet, side of the case holding everything together. That actually ties into the bottom of the framing and that way when it's lifted up you don't have to worry about those boards splitting. What I mean by that is the uh, boards on the side of the case 
are the very old heart pine and they're only going to be about a half inch thick so they're very brittle so I didn't want to rely on those to support the weight of the entire thing. What I'm doing here is ripping the vertical members and also ripping the appropriate bevels for the ones that go on the corners. That bevel fits nicely on the bottom. Did pretty well flush there. Get scrub it around. Now I'll notch this out the way this can sit down in there and actually screw into that so it'll tie everything together, make it a, a stronger assembly. And that gives the uh, profile. This is beveled both ways. Fits nicely on the corner right there. And that's that. Okay, so I got this all laid out. I'm going to put a vertical stud, for lack of a better term, here, 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 the one on the corner here, one in the middle here, and one on this corner. And that should be plenty to hold the uh, whole case together. what I gotta deal with. Get! 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 Get on out of here! Get! Ah! Chickens, man. You leave the door open, they come right in. They make a mess. Look, there's a mess right there. Chickens. This is the end result that I was going for. I notched these out. I just used a little oscillating saw. Cleaned up a little bit with a chisel. Everything fits pretty good. So when these vertical pieces go in there, I can screw them in and they'll attach into the uh, actual little framing up under it. So yeah, I got this squared down the side. It's marked underneath just like that. Same thing on the end. Go as much as you can from one direction. Flip it over, you have your marks on the other side. And that came out pretty smooth, but if you got anything sticking out there, just take a chisel, kind of pair it off. Take a piece, this is what's going in there. See how it fits. Yeah, that's a little tight. So this is the heart pine that I'm using to make the outside cladding with. It's pretty rough stuff, but it is beautiful once you work it all the way down. So after looking for the nails and knocking them out, it was ready to start the uh, process of processing it. After a pass or two through the planer, you can see how it totally transforms into something completely different than what it started off as. It really is beautiful once you get it all cleaned up. The uh, old heart pine just has a grain like nothing else. It's just tight and the, the reddish color is, is beautiful. You know, always wonders me to imagine what the old forests were like that were full of trees like this that were hundreds of years old, if not thousand or more years old when they were taken down. Okay, so it is now 10 o'clock at night, the uh, kids have gone to 
bed. Everything's settled down, so I'm gonna try to get some more work done. So, one thing I'm gonna have to do is uh, fix this cord. I got, uh, where's she at? There she is, this one right here, Abby. Your little puppy, she likes to chew on things. Last time she chewed the plug off of this that goes to the power switch. This time she chewed the uh, cord off of the uh, router that goes to the power switch. Here I'm just swapping out the router bit to a half inch straight cut to make the shiplap joints on the boards for the cladding. And it's just a rabbit on the top and bottom on the opposite sides to where it forms it into a joint that doesn't have gaps in it and put the fence into place drop these stock guys down they're pretty handy they help keep your uh, material pressed up tight against the fence and down to the table and they have a one-way bearing so it can't kick back and a small bevel that keeps it pushed up tight and once i get all this ran through i'm going to basically just scrub it onto the side of the coffin side to uh Get everything fitting good and then tack it on with the brad nailer. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, glue it really good so once it sets up, you know, the glue holds better than the nails and stronger than the wood. And it's a pretty straightforward process. Now I'm going to use this old molding to make a baseboard around the bottom of the coffin and I have another piece of molding that I'm going to use for a little ribbon around the top. Now I'm just going to rip all this uh, base down to, the, to an even width all the way across and run it to the planer to get it to a nice flat back where it'll sit on there nice. Uh, run a bead of glue and nail it on with a trim nailer. I did run into a problem with the piece on the top. I couldn't run it through the planer because it was uh, it didn't have a flat enough surface to run the back through. And I wound up not having enough. I needed a piece for the head end of the coffin. And it was also thicker on one end than the other, which gave me a little problem, but it wasn't nothing that was too hard. And I think it came out pretty good. Um, I had to come up with a solution for that head end. UPS showed up yesterday. This box, this is from the Casket Builder Supply. Casket Builder Supply. Beaver Dam, Wisconsin. 855-833-9933. Okay, so that's our liner material. Comes with instructions. Here is our hardware package. Here's that rope. Oh, that's a fat rope. Okay, I guess this is the uh, padding. Pillow and mattress kit. That's it. Okay, so here's our hardware. It's like these are the hinges. This is the latch. These are the little hold open bars. Kind of cool. These are made to be where they're easily removed, or you you know you can mount them and then take the lid off to do your upholstery or whatnot. These on there. Then once you open it up, you can lift that straight out. Here's the little latch. This moves in and out, and then it comes with this little ball right here. And I guess you would mount on your lid. So once it goes in there, just close in and it locks it in place. So this is what I came up for the uh, top end of the coffin was to uh, make this kind of a decorative corbel-like overlay piece with the uh, horseshoe in the middle kind of a western motif so i um, uh, cut out half of the design on a piece of quarter inch plywood and then used that to make the design symmetrical marked it on another piece and flipped it over that way both sides came out exactly the same uh, kind of a foolproof way to do that because it's a little tricky and you can see that i have a, a creeper creeping up behind me here it's my arch nemesis Get out of here. Get. 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 So 
always that same chicken every time. So I'm just using the Forstner bit to drill out the corners, cut the uh, negative spaces out. Using this old uh, Bosch jigsaw back from the 90s, this thing is really old. That's what I'm going for. I'm maybe putting a horseshoe right here in the middle. And this is when I went to turn on my planer and nothing happened. So after checking to make sure that it was plugged in, it was plugged in. The reset button was all good. And it was not coming on. I banged on it and still nothing. So I had to take the cover off and take a look and see what it was. Turned out, I think it was just a bad connection on the brushes. I took them out, kind of cleaned them a little bit, put them back in and it came back on, but I was worried for a minute. This old piece of wood had a uh, good crack in it. It hadn't broken all the way, but it was cracked, so I glued it and clamped it. So this is the uh, board that goes around the top of the uh, case of the uh, coffin. And it's a handy little tool. It's a little round over plane. It's easier than setting up a router to do this if you only have a few pieces to do. And it does a really good job. And it puts like an eighth inch radius round over on there. So I'm just putting the border around the top, tacking it on with the uh, brad nailer, gluing it, working my way around, making sure everything fits. kind of messed up with these hinges so this is where I messed up but uh, with the hinges if you remember earlier the hinges that I showed were flat to go on a flat surfaces and these here are have this little lip to go on a three-quarter inch surface well I thought they sent eight hinges but they actually sent two sets of four hinges that were different types of hinges and I'm gonna chalk it up to being late at night and being tired and not realizing that there were two different sets of hinges so all this mortising and chiseling i did to make these hinges fit was completely unnecessary and it was probably you know 45 minutes or so of work that i did that didn't really need to be done but it did give me an excuse to use the router plane to clean out the bottom of the holes which is fun even if it's unnecessary. And then later I wind up making some plugs to fill in the uh, areas that I mortised out so it didn't have a uh, gap and border around the top. So yeah, all this was uh, unnecessary, but uh, here's the uh, router plane. It's always fun to use. Cool old tool from the late 1800s. It's missing a depth adjuster, but it still works good. I have the original iron for it. This is actually a Veritas replacement iron for their router plane, which is easier to sharpen because the blade is, you can take it off and put it in a little jig. Whereas the uh, original one's all one piece, just the L shape, and it's a little harder to sharpen. Well, it's a new day, and I'm, look at this chicken in here. Get out of here, man. Go. Go. Get on out of here. I'm going to start the day off by cleaning up.
first thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and screw these on. I'm gonna use the uh, self-centering pilot bit. Just push them in there where they go, pop a little hole. All right, so I'm gonna rip these boards down to make the uh, edge of the top. So I'm gonna rip them down about two inches wide, an inch thick, and I can make my rim around the top. Yes. So after getting all the joints fitting good, I decided to use uh, splines on the corners to hold the uh, whole edge of this together. I'm gonna put in this solid carbide spiral cutter. It's a quarter inch thick, cuts a quarter inch groove. And I'm gonna groove the uh, all the miters to where uh, I'm going to use a one inch wide, quarter inch thick pecan spline to hold everything together. And this is just setting it up so that uh, it cuts the groove where I want it to and as deep as I want it to. And that's the end result. That's where the spline will go in and glue and hold all these corners together. And it's quite strong. But before I do that, I'm gonna swap over to this chamfer bit and put a nice chamfer around the, the top edge of this. And this is the pecan that I'm gonna use to make the splines with. You can see the board is pretty crooked, but I only need a short piece of it to make the uh, splines with, so it'll work out. And I kind of just join it straight up against the table saw fence rather than doing it on the joiner. I'm going to lay down these little pieces of plastic on the corners because I'm just going to clamp it to the, uh, the coffin body to put everything together. And the uh, plastic will keep glue run out from making the uh, top stick to the base of it and just paint it in with a paintbrush stick the splines in there put everything together and clamp it all to the uh, coffin body itself that way I know it's the right shape all right so I got them all glued up I think everything went together pretty good. See the plastic there keeps that drip. These things will stick together if you don't put something there. Now I have to let it sit. Uh, I'll probably leave this clamped up just like this until tomorrow. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, trim all these splines off, flush on the outside. Maybe clean them up on this inside too. This board here is an old door frame that came out of that old house. And I gotta get a couple nails out of it. Oh, there you go. Break it off. And uh, that's all I'm gonna do with it. That's why I've been ripping most of this on the little saw outside because the blades for it are a lot cheaper than the one in here. And these nails can possibly set off the brake cartridge on the saw stop. So a little nail can wind up costing 200 or more dollars. All right, and these couple boards <clears throat> hit a few nails. I uh, got a nail here, nail here, nail here, nail here. None on that side. Uh, none on that side. And one there on this side. Go ahead and figure a new saw blade if you're uh, dealing with this kind of material. Maybe some planer blades too.
Okay, so what I'm gonna do here, is try to get this centerpiece lined up with the joints in here. So I'm gonna put a line down the middle of it. That this is four and a half inches wide, so I'm gonna go two and a quarter. And this is not long enough, but I'm gonna scribe a line down it and I can slide it up under here and line it up in the uh, joints on this frame. Okay, so I clamped it in place and stood it up. And to me, it looks, you know, they're centered on the thing, but it looks like this side needs to come up just a little bit. Just visually checking it, how it actually looks when it's in all together. To me, sometimes it's better than trying to go by the, the numbers on something like this. It's such an odd shape. If it was a square, it's easy to check for square. Okay, so I cut this on the miter saw. Got my ends cut. Everything looks good. And this is how I'm going to attach it. Now don't judge me. Don't judge me. It is a Craig jig. They work good. I like them. Not for everything, but something, sometimes it's the way to go. So after nearly puncturing my intestines in the spot where I just had surgery, getting the support boards into the top frame and emptying the dust collector after planing the boards for the top, I was trying to figure out how am I going to put these together? And somebody suggested a biscuit. Uh, we made biscuits that morning, but I don't see how this was going to work. But, uh, so after thinking about it and having a little bite, I realized that was the uh, wrong biscuits. Oh, those, yeah, those biscuits right there. That's the ones. So uh, go around and mark where I'm gonna cut all the slots for all these biscuits to go. Then I pull out the uh, plate joiner, also known as the biscuit maker, and cut the slots. And that's what they look like and they add some strength but their main purpose is to keep everything flush and all in one plane when you do a clamp up like this so I spread this plastic out on top of my table saw and out feed table and glued it all up and clamped it together with these uh bar clamps and i like to put these pipe clamps to uh counteract them and while i'm waiting on that to dry it was a good time to get back to this decorative piece for the end so I'm just going to rough cut it out with a jigsaw and then I'm going to use this double sided tape to tape the uh, template to it and then flush trim everything on the router table. I had mitered these corners before I realized that I didn't have enough to um, wrap all the way around so I had to use the uh, oscillating saw and cut everything off flush. I set this on there, marked out where I had a nice little margin and kind of just chamfered around and faceted it with the uh, miter saw. Everything looking good, I tacked it on with the brad nail. So I was trying to figure out how to get the shape for the top. So what I did was set the, uh, the frame down, upside down on it, marked around the corners and then I could come off an even margin from that to cut out the shape. And I just use this straight edge to uh, guide the saw and get my shape right. Now everything fitting, uh, put a little chamfer around it and then I came back and sanded it and then finished the chamfer with just about a 30 seconds of an inch cut once I'd sanded the edges smooth. And then I ran a bead of glue around this, set it down, and tacked it on the brad nailer. And here I'm making a cross for the top and one for the inside that goes on the inside of the top. The one on the inside I did a little more stylized where it tapered out and the one on the outside is just straight, kind of dog-eared. And these pieces have the original red paint that was from the house still left on them so I didn't plane them and I wanted to leave that up all intact. 
And basically I just put some glue on it and tacked it on with the brad nailer with some one inch brads. Now the uh, person who commissioned this really liked the uh, rough piece around the bottom and the ribbon around the top. So I ripped these with the rough texture still left on them to make the uh, corner pieces and to kind of cover up the miters where not everything is fitting quite perfect and to give it a little accent. And I made these little filler pieces to fill in the spot that I didn't need to cut out in the first place. Pocket jointed these pieces are in around the bottom and this is where the handles will uh, screw through. And that way it gives it a really good grab when I use the uh, screws. Here I'm cutting some thin strips to uh, put the upholstery on. It came with a cardboard, but I'd rather use this wood and I can tag it on with the brad nailer. The upholstery kit came with a really thin pad. So we got this uh, memory foam, three inch thick piece, and I'm cutting it out the shape for the bottom. This seems a little more appropriate when someone's laying on it. The little thin one just, I know it probably doesn't matter, but this gives a little more cushion. The upholstery was the part I was worried the most about, but it really wasn't that bad. I just put it in there upside down and laid it over the edge and tacked these strips on to hold it in. And then when this was done all the way around, I just flipped it to the inside and it came out looking, looking nice. And the bottom piece basically just laid over the uh, padding on the bottom and tucked it around the edges and it came with the pillow and everything turned out looking good. Putting the handles on was a pretty straightforward process. Just punch a little pilot hole. Use the, uh, that block of wood to shim up off the base and that way they were all at the same height. Drilled the hole through and then use those machine screws with the uh, nuts and washers on the inside. And then once I got all of them in, I uh, came back with the oscillating saw and cut off the excess screw so it wasn't sticking out. And that's pretty much it. It was pretty straightforward. And just put everything back in there. And everything came out looking really nice. Uh, I enjoyed doing this. I enjoy projects like this, but I really hope that I do not have to build one of these for a long time. So this was one of the final touches. Was uh, This person had a daughter that had passed away in a car accident as a teenager. And this is something that she had painted so we wanted to add this on to the bottom of it just as a in, mem in memorial for her as well. So I traced it on this paper, took some carbon paper and then transferred it onto this wood and cut everything out as close as I could to the original with the bandsaw. I used a little Forstner bit to get the inside of those curls. And it came out really good. It was kind of tricky. There's one spot I had to glue a little piece on to be able to get the one little point on there. You'll see it. Yeah, that right there, I had to glue that on there so I could get that one little point to come out just right. And then after I cut everything out, I made this little jig for the drill press with this drum sander to sand the inside where I couldn't reach it with the regular sander. And it Came out looking good. So if you've made it this far, I appreciate you watching. This has been a long video. It's 52 hours of work. Gonna compress it down as much as I could and still show enough detail to where you can understand the uh, process. It was an honor to be able to do this and it, I think it turned out very nice. I think it, uh, everybody was pleased with it. It was, you know, needed the day that I finished it the uh, person had passed away and like I said I hope that I don't have to build another one of these for a long time it's not that I don't enjoy doing it but it's 
you know, you can see what it's for. You know, and it's always um, sad to have to say goodbye to someone. In doing this, I can't help but think of how short life really is. And in the end, death is the uh, great equalizer. No matter who you are, what you do in this life, you can't escape it. Maybe there's hard feelings or grudge that we've been holding on to, and, and does it really matter? You know, the best thing we can do is love one another and try to forgive each other of our transgressions. Life's short. Anyway, I'm not going to try to wax too philosophical. Everybody's got their own thoughts and feelings on it. And uh, thank you for watching. If you stuck around this far, I really appreciate it, and I hope you... Uh, got something from this video maybe a little inspiration to you know try to do something similar yourself but once again thank you for watching and this was a great honor to be able to do this